We are now joined by Texas Tech head football coach Joey McGuire. Still ever that just I was head say, football say it coach. again, man. I mean, just uh, I, it's almost like a pinch me moment every time I see somebody, somebody says that. Matt Dowdy told me that uh, when you got off the plane, when you were hired and you got off the plane, you shook his hand and he, you said, I'm going to be the easiest head coach you've ever had to work, you've ever worked with. Yes, sir. Yeah, this, is, this is natural for you, this, this whole thing. Well, you know, I, you've heard me say it before. Um, I would be y'all if I wasn't doing this. Man, I just have such a great appreciation for what y'all do. And um, just – you know, it's so so much fun to be around guys that y'all have a passion for what you do, and that's like us as coaches. And so uh, it was just, I told him, I said, listen, man, whatever you need me to do, I'm going to say yes, and we'll do it full speed. Did you ever come with Rule uh, or Aranda to media days? I can't recall. No. So no. this is your first time here. Yes, sir. What's it like? I mean, I know it's early in the morning and it's not quite yeah. picked up, but uh, to be here, to know you're going to be up on stage in a little while talking about this program of yours, I mean, what's all that like for you? Well, it, it was really cool, and it's cool for two reasons. Number one, this is one of my favorite places in the world to play. Mm -hmm. You know, we played here so many times, and we have such great memories here. Uh, but walking in with my players, you know, uh, the five guys, I can get – emotional just thinking about you know the five guys that we brought um, whenever we walked in you know they they were very proud um, and and when we walked in and we were able to see the field and the setup you know that was a really cool moment for for them and and you know I just feed off of their energy they're they're really excited to be here do you ever have moments where you're not full throttle with energy <laughs> When I close my eyes and go to bed, that's probably it, man. <laughs> yeah, you got to decompress and yeah. rest. Yeah, I've, I've, I've started this new deal at night. Uh, our sports psychologist, Dr. Bradstreet, uh, had this app. And uh, my, my wife laughs, and then Garrett came in the other night whenever I was playing it, and he's laughing uh, because it's basically somebody kind of very monotone talking you uh, down through different stuff and relaxing. And that's really uh, – I've started that because, you know, my mind just uh, is a nonstop all the time. And so I started that kind of try to decompress at the end of the day and, and get some sleep. But yeah, I've never needed much, so that's okay. Rule used to use these. Yeah. And, in fact, uh, I do. Uh, you have it, 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 coffee. Coffee, man. <laughs> coffee. coffee. I get it from my granddad. He drank it all day, 24-7, and I'm the same way. It doesn't – that's one thing that it, it really doesn't keep me up if I drink it late at night. It's just uh, – but it does get me going, so that's usually it. There is uh, – it depends on who you talk to about Texas Tech football. Uh, you know, last year you guys were a bowl team. Right. And it almost seems like – and Craig's brought this up many times. Like, people forget that. Yeah. It's not like you – the cupboard was bare and you're rebuilding this no. thing. Um, you feel like people are sleeping on you a little bit? They can. You know, uh, I, I said this earlier, uh, the team that's the Big 12 champs right now, they were pick number eight in yep. the conference. I was a part of that, you know, and so – um, this conference is a, a conference that you got to play every single week. There's no off weeks, especially with Coach Le what Leopold is doing at Kansas. I mean, whenever you – once you get into conference play, you be better be ready to go. And um, so we're, we're excited. You know, I, I do agree with what you're saying. Like, we th – there wasn't anybody that necessarily we can't replace, and we're a bowl team. We have a lot of guys coming back, and we've added some guys. And so we feel like we're in a good spot. You know, I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, I, I, you'll hear it today, but the one thing that I knew our guys would buy in, I just didn't know it was going to be this fast. Like, there's nobody in that locker room that doesn't know which way we're going. Um, they, they're all behind each other, and uh, we're in a really good spot going into the season. You mentioned you got five players here. Yes, sir. I guess on our release we had Caleb Rogers, yes, Miles Price, Tyree Wilson, and uh, Dadrian Taylor Demerson. Yes, sir. Who's the fifth one? So the fifth one is our Champions for Life representative, okay. Tony okay. Bradford Jr. Um, if I don't say this, he'll get mad at me from the North Shore. He <laughs> always reminds everybody uh, that he was a part of a national champion. Uh, yeah, it was yeah. very funny at dinner last night because Rabbit, he's from, uh, and that's uh, Dadrian Taylor. Everybody calls him Rabbit. He was like, Come on, man. You didn't play anybody outside the state of Texas. How can you be the national champion? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, I mean, take us into how you decided. I mean, this is your first group right. to bring to media days. Uh, there is a process that goes into that. Not everybody just brings their star players necessarily. Right. What made you pick these five guys? Well, all four of them are on my leadership council. Um, they all have uh, different personalities. And, and did, you know, we brought two on offense, two on defense. Uh, we were 100%. Um, going to bring two linemen, 
You know, Tyree Wilson's the outside linebacker defensive end, and Caleb Rogers is our starting left tackle. You know, and I, I've never been on teams that if you're not good up front, you don't have much of a chance. I don't care how good your skill is. And, and so we wanted to make sure we brought our linemen. And then whenever you get to hear or, or get to meet uh, Rabbit and Miles Price, uh, they're the Energizer Bunnies. Mm. They're the exact same, on uh, one on offense, one on defense. You know, they, they never stop talking. <laughs> they never stop talking about what we're about, and they never stop challenging mm -hmm. their teammates in the right way. You said something to me when you walked over here before we started that you, you saw and heard Dave and Randy yesterday. Yes, sir. And you said he's come into his own. He's very comfortable. Right. You could tell that just yourself. You knew that as they kind of turned the corner last year, but you, you noticed that with him? Yeah, you know, I mean, you've heard me say it before. I listen to everybody's press conferences. You know, I've done that for years. Forever, it's yeah. kind of one of my hobbies of just kind of learning and, and just listening to different people. And, um, man, what two better guys to work for than Matt Rule and, and Dave Aranda and, you know, really – total opposite guys whenever it comes to, uh, you know, what they, not necessarily what they believe, but, you know, talking. I mean, Coach Rule, is his dad was a pastor, and yeah. he has that, you know, that fire and everything. And then Coach Randa, I mean, his master's in, is in uh, philosophy from Texas Tech, you know, and that's kind of who he is. And I just think uh, I was really proud yesterday, you know, because I really, I think a lot of Coach Randa, and I really respect him and, and what he did for my family and, and was just incredible. And, and so listening to him yesterday, you know, I, I felt really proud, you know, that um, he, he does embrace exactly uh, who he is. And then he, he's definitely comfortable, um, you know, talking about the team. And, you know, the one thing about all three of us when we talk about Coach Rule, Coach Randa, and, and myself, it's all about the players. You know, it is a player-led program. It is a player-centered program. And so whenever you have that, you got a chance to, to be really special. What do you think of this player's era, and how are you kind of adapting to that as a head coach where there is so much more freedom right. or things at their fingertips? And that's a, a balance, I, I would think, because you can kind of get out of control if you're too focused on one thing or the other. So how have you kind of handled that early on? Well, you know, I, I do think if you come in, so the first thing I did was meet with every player that was coming back and met with them one-on-one. -on -one. And I told them, I said, look, I'm not asking for a chance. I'm just asking for you to be open-minded and let me prove to you who I am and what I say I do, I'm going to do. And and we are player-centered. You know, the, the new building, um, the new football facility on that side, that entire building is player-centered from rehab, recovery, the players' lounge, uh, the equipment room, everything in that building is all the strength, uh, our weight room and our strength staff is all player-centered. So I think they've seen that, um, but we're in a new age. Um, you know, I, I think the commissioner said it best. We do need guidelines and some guardrails around what's going on in, in uh, college athletics today, but you also got to embrace it. I heard Nick Saban right. say, if you don't adapt and change, then you're going to be a dinosaur and they're extinct. And so we, I think we have a really good plan at Texas Tech. We've got some exciting things going on, and so we, we feel like we're in a good spot. Can you, can you name a more, I don't know, though, is it passionate? Loyal fan base than no. Texas Tech? <laughs> no. You know, you know, Smoke, this is what's crazy is, uh, you know, my daughter's a Red Raider. Right. Uh, my sister, two brother-in-laws. Uh, my dog was born in Lubbock. I mean, you know, whenever my, my nephew played for Cliff, I mean, I thought I knew what Texas Tech was all about uh, until I got around the fan base, you know, and, and it could be a Tuesday night and uh, we're playing Iowa State in basketball and there's going to be 15,000 people. You know, it's just – um, you kind of draw a circle around Lubbock, and you can go three to four hours any direction. And those people grew up being Red Raiders. You know, they grew up wanting to wear the red and black. And, man, it is fun. I, you know I want to win. But whenever I get around those people, just the passion and everything just drives me even more. Is it because it's – and I don't want to use the word isolated, but that Lubbock no, I, is island. It's almost on its own island. I love the word. You know, that's one thing. I lived uh, out there too, and what, I, that's I definitely mean, a word that applies. It's but, one of the deals, though. Like yeah. I tell everybody, you know, I think we've been our own worst enemy at times about, like, saying isolated. Look, I flew to Houston yesterday on a direct flight from Lubbock to Houston. You know, uh, we're going to fly back tonight from Dallas to H to Lubbock. I can name uh, over half probably of the Big 12 that you can't fly directly into mm -hmm. that stadium. So so that part right there never bothers me. I do think because uh, you don't have a professional team 
so close to where you can get there within an hour um, that you do have that uh, true college city. Right. You have that true college um, uh, just feel and love it. And I say city because we're over 300,000 people. You know, we have anything and everything you want. Uh, I've gained 10 pounds since I've been in Lubbock because the food is absolutely <laughs> incredible. Uh, I'm trying to work it off. I think camp will get some of it, so yeah. I'll be okay. Joey McGuire, Texas Tech head football coach with us, Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports. You mentioned that facility, yes. uh, $200 million uh, football project, and that's going to be getting underway after this season, yes, uh, I believe. And uh, just kind of take us through that process. Was this something that was already kind of being talked about before your hire? Was this something that you'd mentioned is – out of need like I mean kind of take us through how this all sort of came together well the, they already had it in place as far as with the uh, football facility okay. um, you have uh, Dusty Womble Regent Womble made a 20 million dollar donation to start that project and then Cody Campbell Regent Campbell came in and wanted to like we were ready to do something in the south end zone and so you kind of had two different projects and whenever you had 20 million with a guy going one way and then uh, Regent Campbell donating $25 million, and now it's the Cody Campbell field, then you can, they were like, hey, let's combine these projects and build them out. Uh, the plan is the south end zone, because the south end zone will also have a lot of football to it. Like our offices, our team rooms, our meeting rooms will be in the south end zone, and there'll be a sky bridge connecting uh, the football facility. And so it only made sense to try to do it um, all together. It was huge for me because – uh, whenever I first got there, I wasn't in, involved in the plans of the football facility, you know. And so with uh, the new uh, projects all going together, it, it, it allowed me to be a part of it. How much does all this landscape change in college football enter into the bubble of the football program? Right. How much do you guys as staff or talk about the USC, UCLA? We know what happened yeah. a year ago after this a year right. ago. How much of that comes into play when you guys are talking? Well, I, I said it earlier, it's above my pay, pay grade. Yeah. Uh, my AD is absolutely incredible, Kirby Hocutt. And, um, you know, he's right in the middle of it. Um, excited about the new commissioner. Now, Bob Bowlesby is as good a man to me in the six year, going on six years of being in the Big 12. But I'm excited uh, about, you know, possible change and adding a couple people. But for me, thinking about it, man, I, I'm really excited because I think, and I think we saw that with Oklahoma State and Baylor playing in in the Big 12 championship, just look at the numbers. You can compare them to any conference. You can add conferences together, and you're still not reaching the numbers that we, we reached in the Big 12 championship. And so I think we have a great conference, and I think there's a lot of people that want to be a part of it. Do you feel like because it's been bludgeoned two or three times, it, it, there's almost this – uh, that, that maybe be more on the offensive rather than be proactive and on the defensive? No, I think it's important for us right now to be very um, – offensive as far as like what we're going to do um, I will tell you the four teams you know we at Baylor played BYU so mm -hmm. we know what kind of team they are uh, we all saw what Houston did uh, last year we all saw what Cincinnati did in Central Florida so we're bringing in four good teams that you know there's a lot of people that wouldn't want to play them um, and, and so I think the conference is strong but why not be on the offensive and have an opportunity if we have an opportunity to add some more teams. What did you think? Did you get a chance to listen to Brett Yormark? I uh, did. Yeah. What were your, I mean, I doubt you've had a chance to meet him yet because he's kind of just starting, or maybe you have, I don't know, but no. uh, your impressions? Well, uh, he, he said it yesterday. He has called every coach in the conference, so yeah. I got to talk to him okay. on the phone. Um, really excited. You know, he brings a different uh, look to um, the Big 12 as far as looking at it a, di at a, different, uh, a different way to add – um, some teams. I think he's going, you know, he said it, hip and cool. Yeah. Um, we try to be hip and cool all the time at Texas Tech. Uh, I don't know. I'm the hip and cool I'm not cool sure guy. I can do that. No, yeah. me either. But I know our creative team and, yeah. and, and what they do. And, and so I think um, he's going to bring a, a different aspect to the Big 12. Um, energy. I mean, you, you just talk to him one time and the guy's, you know, fired up and energetic. And so I'm excited. Uh, I think we're losing a great leader, but I think, uh, you know, he's going to do a great job in that, that place. I heard a story about you during the offseason that uh, it's someone that you used to be on the staff with who was struggling a little bit with uh, finances and, and, and kind of figuring things out. And you, you went to bat for him. Yeah. 
Yeah, they, they, there's stories that sometimes people don't know the background to right. stuff, but that you you went, no, let's let's take care of you. Well, you know, we uh, we've been extremely blessed, my wife and I, and uh, you know, we both uh, I think come from not a lot and have worked our tails off to be where we're at. And uh, one of my really good friends has always told me, you know, when you're in those positions, it's your obligation to take care of people. That it's just not about you, um, but what you can give back. And, and uh, you know, he was in a tough situation. And, and I will tell you, uh, I got onto him pretty hard from the standpoint of him because it had to be brought, somebody else brought it to my attention. Right. And I said, listen, man. If you're with me, look, Smoke, we're stuck together for the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, really, I, I feel like people that have been in my life, um, I'm going to be by their side all the way through it. And and so whenever he asked, I was like, man, I've got you. I know it's – I always think of it this way, whether it's be repaid, if it's repaid actually – or if it's repaid in some other way, right. everything's going to come back. Everything's right. going to come back if you if you do the right thing by people, then it's all going to come back. And I'm not bringing up his name because I don't want to do that, but right. I just wanted to bring up the scenario, and and, and I knew that, and, and that didn't yeah. surprise me at all. Yeah. X's and O's. I, I uh, you, we mentioned the team and what you have coming back or whatever. Where, where's what are your strengths? What are like the two or three thing bullet points, and maybe one or two things you have to figure out in August. Well, it's a strength, but we got to figure out our starting quarterback. Yeah, now, absolutely. It's a strength. I mean, I would like to see a, a room anywhere in the nation that has three guys like we do, you know. And I told, uh, I told Coach Kitley, I said, Coach, you'll never have a – ever in your career have a room like you have. And he was like, what do you mean? I said, well, it really doesn't matter who the quarterback is. They're all the same as far as they all extend plays with their feet. And so um, you don't have to call a different offense on who's out there. They all have – uh, arm talent so they all can throw uh, any throws that we need to make and so that's we have a really good healthy room uh, it's a healthy competition um, I was really proud that nobody left yep. whenever I did not name a quarterback because you know in some situations that that happened and it was a deal that they're really competitive they're really close they love the university um, but we got a strong room we got a strong running back room we got two vets when you combine their career I thought I think I saw that they have the most career yardage and touchdowns that's in the Big 12 uh, coming back. Um, we got to figure out the offensive line. Now, the play, people the people are there. The, old, the players are there. But we had three guys that didn't go through spring. Do one to three of those guys strengthen us and make us uh, what we need to be up front? Um, on the defense side of the ball, I'm excited about the secondary. We have some old guys that have played a lot of football. So I think that's a strength. Um, and, and then we've added some guys up front. But, you know, you'll see him today. Tyree Wilson's walking around here. And, you know, I mean, it's preseason stuff and all that. But I will tell you this, if you go on the NFL scouting, uh, right now there's two very reputable scouting services that everybody gets in the NFL. And he's a projected mid-first round if he plays the way he's supposed to play. So, you know, I was hoping that he would be on a couple of different teams. But... It's fuel to the fire, yep, you know. Yep. Uh, he knows it, and and so I I think we have a chance to be good on defense and be a little bit different than what Texas Tech has been in the past on defense. What are your uh, thoughts on uniforms? I know this is nah, random, but Tech it. has kind of been known for uniforms. They've had yeah. all sorts of combinations. What's your your thoughts now in place? I know Cedar Hill had some cool no unis. Yeah, yeah. We had 16 combinations. You know? <laughs> Did you really? Yes, sir. Yes, wow, sir. like Oregon. Yeah, we tried. We tried. We were Under Armour, and, you know, I, that was one of the things. Um, you know, we're going to come out very traditional. Uh, that first game, we're going to wear the, the black helmets and the red jerseys and and uh, the black pants. I will tell you this, our equipment guy, Zane Perry, who's the best. I mean, he's an absolutely incredible. The first time I met him, I said, hey, listen, I'm going to tell you this. I was an equipment guy for in high school for nine years. We will not wear white pants on real grass. And he said, <laughs> Coach, I love you. Yeah. And so, you know, combinations like that, uh, it, it's going to be, uh, you know, we won't go crazy. We want to kind of stick with what really looks good. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I've got a couple guys on my staff, including Zane, that, you know, will put some stuff together. Uh, you know, we'll see what we wear in that Houston game. and But we're going to start out traditional. And, and, of course, it all depends on if we get a night game. I know, you know, that all black at night in Lubbock is a big deal. And yeah. so uh, we'll be a part of that, too. You uh, have many other people who want to talk to you today. Um, do you pinch yourself even today? You, you earned this. Yes. This is something you earned. 
and you may have earned it even before you got the opportunity. Is this, is this uh, still something that you every day every wake day, up? Every day, man. Every day. Uh, whether it's walking out of my house or whether it's walking out of the FTF and I see the West Side uh, press box and just, uh, it's, uh, you know, a dream come true. Um, it's a great fit. Uh, and so I'm really excited. I'd be remiss, so I, you know, and you know this, I've said this to you many times, what uh, Baylor did for um, me and my family in the, in the five years that I had at Baylor and the memories and the support, um, especially from Sikkim 365, but also just the fans and the alumni, it, it's absolutely incredible. I was really lucky to be where I was at. I don't know if I would be where – I'm at right now if I didn't spend my five years at Baylor. You know, we hear about transfer portal, and players do that now in the middle of the year. You were in a very unique situation. Crazy. Yeah. How, how did you juggle that? And, and, and you had an opportunity. There's only right. so many of those jobs. Yeah. So you had to take it because jobs are becoming open earlier than ever before. How did you – how difficult was that to juggle that? Well, and how much did recruiting play into that as well? Yeah. Because how much is that also kind of complicated – a position like yours? Well, man, it was emotional um, from the standpoint of, you know, I love those players. And, I mean, Jalen Petrie and Terrell Bernard flew out to yeah. see us and, mm -hmm. you know, talk to the team. And, and uh, you know, d d those guys, that, that team is so special to me. So leaving at that time, getting ready to go play in a huge game um, was really emotional. But like you said, I mean, it was an opportunity that we just couldn't pass up. And, and, uh, and then it was big recruiting-wise for me to get in uh, from the get-go in two things. One, to see what team we had coming back, to what holes we needed to fill, and then also to get in a jump on that 22 class um, was huge for us. Um, but, you know, it, it, was, uh, it was tough. Uh, I went to the Iowa State game and I went to the Oklahoma State game, but I did ask Coach, I mean, uh, Kirby Holcutt, I said, you know, I'm probably not going to be in Waco until I have to be in Waco whenever I'm on the sideline. Yeah, you told me that. I, yeah. I texted you and you said, I'll probably try to be as far away from that as I possibly can yes, just sir. because of the emotions involved. When it comes to recruiting and the fact you had to get involved early, you had some players that are now committed to you that were – going to go to Baylor how do you handle that conversation because you have to take care of you yeah. and your program well the one thing uh and, and this is with both head coaches we don't negatively negatively recruit you know coach Aranda does not believe in that and coach rule doesn't believe in it and and I don't either and so I think it's all about us I actually heard the commissioner talk about it yesterday yeah. whenever he was saying it's about the big 12 you know, I believe in the product that we are showing people. I believe in Texas Tech. And so it, that's not a hard sell. I don't need to talk about anybody else. And so um, it was one of those deals is give, give some guys an opportunity to, to come to Lubbock and, and uh, do it the right way. You know, and I know on the other side, because um, we have a lot of guys that were on that staff, you know, they're doing the same thing. They're doing it the right way. And I think that's really important, especially, I will tell you, especially in this day and age in the portal, you know, uh, I remember whenever I was a high school coach and some college coaches calling my guys and they decommitted and wasn't real nice conversations. You know, and I, I told my players, it shows you who they really are. That's how you're going to be coached. And so we talk about it all the time is if we don't get a kid, tell them good luck. Treat them right. Treat them with respect because they'll end up coming back to us in the end if that's where they're supposed to be. And so I think we're doing it the right way. I know uh, learning from Miranda and Coach Rule, they're doing it the right way. Thanks, man. I know you. I don't have to say enjoy yeah. the day. I know you will <laughs> you know I enjoy will. the day. It's great to see you. Great to Garrett, see you. Garrett, Debbie, all of them, the whole team. Yes, right? sir. Yep. Well, I appreciate y'all. Y'all y'all are amazing. You know, and I'm big fans. So, you know, if you ever need anything, let me know. Our YouTube channel is tons of Texas Tech fans. Oh, yeah. So they will love this today. Yes. Yeah. Hey, wreck them, man. Dirt Wake, I'm going to throw out a note to you because he's a huge Texas Tech fan. Thanks, Joey. Thank appreciate you. it. Joey McGuire, Texas Tech football coach, 365 Sports.